The new Google Chromecast is an incredible device, but for the most part, people just take advantage of the excellent streaming capability, the music integration with Google Home products, or the smart home control. But today, I'm going to show you how to get so much more out of this Google Chromecast. And surprise, surprise, this actually had to end up as a two-part series. Now, that is because the Google Chromecast is honestly one of the most customizable devices that I've worked with. And this is kind of expected from an Android TV or now a Google TV type of device. But what we're going to do on the videos here is get more and more complex as we go and you'll get better and better results. One of the things I absolutely love about the new Google Chromecast is how the settings and that whole menu system is laid out. I find it easy to navigate, but what I don't find easy is getting there. And so if you actually hold the home button on the remote, this is a quick way instead of going all the way up to the top of the settings menu or the menu and then going back down to the settings, hold that home button just for a few seconds and you get a quick move there. And speaking of moving around quickly in the interface, well, there's a couple of quick buttons, the YouTube and the Netflix button. And everybody loves that they can quickly get into those apps applications and I've used it quite often but you can actually remap the YouTube button by holding that button as well and you'll be able to choose through the other YouTube related services. Now that Netflix button you can't remap unless you start to use something a little more complex called the button remap application and that application isn't easy to find you can't just search for it and have it come up. Now I'm going to show you a couple of methods for how to get Play Store applications on to your Google Chromecast, but the first one is my favorite because you can go to the Play Store on a PC or even just do a Google search and then you can find that and if you're logged into the same account as your Chromecast, you're going to be able to send that as an installation to your Chromecast. Now that application is pretty self-explanatory to be honest, but if you're struggling with things within this video, check the description, check the comments. We'll have a number of tutorials that you can go and check out to make sure you have as many resources as we can give you here today. Now, I love the PC interface. It's what I grew up with. And so as soon as I got the Chromecast, I wanted to find a way to connect a keyboard and a mouse because you can actually use those to type in through search or navigate through the system with either the mouse or the keyboard. And through this hub, which I'm going to reference a number of times in a power cube, I was able to connect my Chromecast to it and get those accessories working immediately. One of the things that I've noticed with remotes that are this small is that they can get lost. And so right now you can't actually purchase a backup directly from Google. You'd have to go and buy a whole new Chromecast. Now, while I'm sure at some point Google's going to give us that option, it's not available today, but you probably have some backups around your home. And actually, funny enough, I had an extra Fire TV remote. This is able to pair immediately. The only buttons that really don't work real well is the voice assistant button. I press it and it comes up, but I can't actually speak through it and everything else is pretty much good to go. You're also likely, because you're an Android TV user, if you're watching this, to have one of these remotes. And I actually have a number of Android TVs that I've been able to acquire over time here. And that has meant that I was able to pair this. But the very best remote or the very best backup that you actually have is sitting right here on your smartphone. Every one of us has one of those and there's an Android TV remote application available that will connect to your Chromecast and you should do this right away so that you always have that remote available should you lose this one. Now, Tech with Brett actually has a great video that I will also reference down below where he shows you how to pair his Harmony remote and that's a great interface for controlling obviously all of your devices. Now, the other thing, if all of this isn't enough, is that the Google Home application now shows the different media content types and you can control it from that application as well. Now, of course, we're talking about a streaming device and we need some different options for audio. And actually, almost every pair of earbuds or headphones that I used paired correctly and could play almost every type of content. I had these 
playing Disney Plus, Netflix, YouTube, and of course all of the different music. And I tried with the Echo Buds, they were kind of my biggest struggle. Didn't really get them connected and working with everything. But what I was also able to do was use some of the Nest speakers that I have around my home, including the Nest Hub Max, the Nest Audio, the Nest Mini, and even in speaker pairs. Now, that situation is not yet perfect. And I'll tell you that you're going to struggle in certain cases getting the Bluetooth paired. You might have to do it a couple of times. And then if they're in speaker pairs, you're probably not going to get perfect performance. But this is something being worked on actively because I've seen this situation improve and improve since I got the device. Now, Google Chromecast has been around so long that I essentially grew up, at least in my adult life. Do I ever grow up? Anyways. I essentially grew up using the Chromecast and therefore casting. Now, you can still do that with this new Chromecast, but what's really interesting is with the remote, it continues to control the media on screen after you've set up that cast. So you can start the cast, walk away and allow kids or someone else to control with the remote. But for me, I don't necessarily want to show photos and videos on my phone. And I think it's a good idea right now to maybe not be handing things like phones to people in order to look at photos and videos. And so on most Android phones, you're going to find a really quick screen mirroring capability that will instantly connect with your Chromecast and allow you to show everything on your screen for the whole time and it does work when you orient horizontally. Now for you Apple fanboys, I can't ignore you entirely even though you're probably using your old and busted Apple TVs. Now there is an application that I left a link to down below that will essentially allow you to do the exact same thing. This one was tested, it's working and I'm not seeing any sort of latency or issues. Now, don't get all ticked off at me, you Apple fanboys. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Your Apple TVs are wonderful. But there's something about a PC with a Chrome browser on it because you can actually cast. Now, this isn't something I do a lot of anymore because I think there's better options out there, but I was able to cast Zoom video at one point from my Chrome browser onto the TV. This, along with other content that you can cast from the Chrome browser, allows you to actually show a full PC interface. Now, this gives you a lot of different options for bringing up content, but just kind of keep in mind that in most cases, you're not going to hear any sound, so you'll need that PC or laptop laptop, whatever you're using, close by. Speaking of showing pictures, Google's ambient mode allows you to do this. And while you can go into the settings menu on the device itself, you probably want to use the Google Home application. The interface is much better and it will give you access to some additional options to show different pictures from different sources. Now, if you would like to show those really quickly, you can hold that home button again and quickly go to ambient mode through that little menu. One of the most annoying things about the whole system is that when you go into the Google Home app or you're trying to voice control the volume on the Chromecast, well, it doesn't work and you often get a response back of, you have to go into the settings. Well, what they actually mean by that is when you go into the audio control settings here for the remote and for the Chromecast in general, you actually have to choose that you're adjusting the Chromecast volume. And once you do that, you will be adjusting the volume on anything coming from that Chromecast. So any of the content playing there. So this might help you in your situation. It might not, but that's the best we can do today. One of the biggest things for me within this interface today is the fact that you can customize so much and it changes over time based on what you watch. Now, initially when you set it up and you've got your profile logged in there, you might have some YouTube content that shows up and starts to be recommended to you. And then there might be a little bit else from Netflix or Disney Plus or a couple of other services, but in general, once you start going into the titles and you look at some of that more, those more detailed options, you can say that you've watched content and you can rate it with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And this allows you to start customizing what you're seeing on the screen. When you get to that detail screen, one of the things that you need to understand is that 
Google can only search certain services. And this is really impactful when you have a service like Crave here in Canada. It's not being searched through for the different shows that I'm looking for. So when I go and I search for Vikings, it says, well, you gotta buy it on Google TV. That's not actually the case. It's available on Crave. Now we talked about those profiles and actually it doesn't look like profiles do much until you start going into the Google related apps and things like YouTube are especially relevant. So you can add that second profile for your kid or your family and they can then go into the YouTube services and pull the content related to them and watch under their profile. And that's great, but it doesn't work in all of the different apps and it's not a whole interface changeover when you do the profile. But if you have kids, you might find, just like me, you don't want necessarily the new Borat movie <laughs> being advertised to your kid because he starts to ask questions and then he kind of wants to watch it. So what you can do is actually change to an apps only mode and then this would really lock down the device in conjunction with a few other settings to make sure that kids just can just go into the apps that you've given them access to. And speaking of kids, there's nothing I've enjoyed more than finding out my kid has managed to purchase a very expensive application or a subscription. And you can actually lock this down and by default, it will be locked down to a Google account password, but I found that to be a bit painful. And so you can go into the settings and change to a pin. Now, if you happen to trust everyone in the house, you can actually turn off that purchasing uh, protection entirely and allow a free-for-all. I mentioned earlier how you could go on a PC and search for the different applications, but a lot of people don't necessarily want to do that and they want to use the interface that they're there. Now, there's actually a really simple way to get to the Play Store and to see a larger library of apps. Now, what you can do is actually ask the Google Assistant to open Play Store and it will actually do that for you. Once you're in there, you again have a few options for limiting purchases and limiting the type of content that is showing up and available from there. And this just gives you a little bit bigger of a library and a good interface for checking out some of those other what comes out of the Play Store for me is a lot of important applications and some of the things you guys have asked me for. Plex, totally available, totally works, you can play things immediately. But if you don't want to set up a Plex server, and I don't really want my own Plex server in my home, well, something a little bit simpler is VLC for Android. Now, that application allowed me if I just had a network drive on the network that's exposed or a PC that was exposed as well, this allowed me to actually get video, photos, and music content playing in seconds through that interface. And one of my favorite things is that I can control my whole home through the Google Chromecast, but something that's not working great just yet is to see all of your cameras on one page. And while I believe that Google will eventually give us this opportunity on these smart display interfaces, well, it's not there today and we don't know when it will come. So Tiny Cam or the Tiny Cam Pro version, if you need some of the extra features, is a really great way to show things like your Wise Cam. So once you have a number of those set up in your home, you can actually download Tiny Cam Pro. And what was great about this is I didn't have to buy it again because we're on a base Android device here. It was able to install and I couldn't port the settings, but I was able to reconfigure to see my cameras all on one page. Not everyone has amazing Wi-Fi, but they might have access to an Ethernet port by their TV. And you can actually purchase this Ethernet adapter directly from Google that works with the new Chromecast. I love what we've already done with the Chromecast, but believe me when I say this, there is so much more that we can do with this. And that's why what's up on screen is part two of our mini series here. Go check that out. Honestly, you're going to be blown away. Thanks for watching everyone. And of course, don't hate, automate.